Hello, my name's Mark, I'm from GK Tutor. I'm here today with Practical Machinist to go into the second part of programming a Bush program with G-Code. So in this video, we're going to write the roughing cycle for the profile of this Bush. So let's make a start. Okay, so we're gonna start off with N1 and then an operator's note in brackets. So this N1 is a search function. It used to be used to number each individual line in the old days. Now we tend to use it more for subroutines and searching. So by using N1 there, we can type N1 on our control, down arrow on the FANUC controls there, and it will search through to our rough and turn, our N1. Okay, so the operator's note is not read by the machine. That's purely for us, so we know what this part of the program is for. And we always end all lines in an end of block, that semicolon there. Okay, so this next line is our safety line. Now, your safety line will probably look a little different. It depends on your machine needs and the way your machine is set up, parameters, etc. But I have a full video on how to set up your safety lines also with Practical Machinist. So go through their archive of videos there to see that one. So the G54, this sets our standard work shift datum. A G21 sets our units to metric. G90 is our absolute coordinate system rather than incremental. If we're using incremental, it'll be G91. G97 sets our spindle speed to revs per minute. And we'll be talking more about that in a minute. Uh, G80 turns off any active cycles. So if we stop a program halfway through, there might be a drilling cycle active. G80 will make sure that's no longer active before we start running this sequence. And G40 cancels any cutter compensation that may be active. Okay, so it's time for a tool call. Now, there's different ways we can do this, depending on the machine. But if we're using a Puma lathe, for example, or a standard lathe, we probably see it written like this. So T0101, it's tool one, and our geometry offsets at number one, that's in the tool table. And MO6 is our tool change M code. So this will turn our turret round to make tool one uh, live on the center line of the machine. Now we could use M6 on a different line, it wouldn't matter there. So G50 is our speed clamp. This stops the machine going any faster than the speed that we've issued it. So G50 followed by S2500 will stop the machine from going above 2500 RPM no matter what. Now this is important because rather than G97, we're now using G96. So this means no matter what the diameter that we're cutting, the revs will change to make sure our cutting surface speed is always the same. And we're gonna give it a surface cutting speed of 280, so that's what that S280 is there. And MO3 turns the spindle on in a clockwise direction. If we load our tools backwards, we might have to use MO4 for this. Okay, so next move is a rapid move, G00. So we're gonna wrap it to X44. Now I'm taking the bar size as 42 millimeters, so that gives us two millimeters clearance above the nominal bar size. As you can see, our major diameter that we're gonna cut is 40 millimeters, two millimeters under. So I'm wrapping it into X44, gives us two millimeters clearance from that bar size, and five millimeters off the front face of that part there with the Z. And we're using MO8 here to turn on the coolant. So now our tool is in position and about to cut. Now is a great time to turn on the coolant. So before it may have um, obstructed our view of what's going on inside the machine, but now we're about to cut, we can turn it on. So G01 is our feed rate command. So as we're five millimeters off the front face of the part and we're above bar size, I'm gonna feed in now and not wrap it in. Now this is more of a personal preference for me. I like that extra control as I'm getting close to the part with that override switch. So you can just wrap it straight into a Z0 here also if you wish. So I've added a feed rate here because we are using G01. So I've added a feed rate of 0.1 millimeter per revolution. Now, if you're an Imperial, that's four foul per rev. I've purposely not stated what material we are cutting here. So speeds and feeds are just arbitrary figures that I've put in here. Okay, so as we move on to the next slide, we now coming down to face off our part. So with feed rate still active from above, the same as G01. So we're now coming down in X to face off our part and I'm coming just past the center line. So this is just to remove any pips so our drill can find that center later when we come in. And I've also slowed the feed rate down a little bit because we're probably removing quite a bit of material as we're facing off there. So after we've faced off, we now want to move the tool back out of the way. So wrap it into X44Z2. This gives us two millimeters clearance in Z 
and two millimeters clearance in X as we wrap it away. So now we can start our roughing cycle. So we're gonna use the G71 roughing cycle for this. And here we have our G71 U1 R1. So what does this mean? Well, the G71 calls a roughing cycle. The U value in this case is the depth of cut and the R value is the retract value. So it's gonna be taking one millimeter depth of cut each time and it's gonna retract one millimeter after that cut to move back into position to take the next cut. So the second line of the G71 cycle. Now the G71 cycle can be written in one line also depending on your machine controls. And for more information about roughing cycles, I also have a video with Practical Machinist that goes into this in much more depth. So the second line G71, the P and Q values there. So these refer to N numbers. This is a subroutine. So P100 is going to read the first line of the subroutine and Q200 defines the last line. And again, more about subroutines in different lessons, but you'll see how this one works as we progress. The U and W there is our finishing allowance. This is how much we're gonna leave on for our finishing tool. So U is our X, so we're leaving on 0.2 millimeters in X for our finishing tool and only 0.5 in Z. And we're also issuing a feed rate there too. So as I mentioned, our P100 calls upon an N100 line. This is it in action here. So as the machine reads G71 P100, it looks through the program for N100 and knows that's a subroutine that is going to be cutting. Now, these can be any numbers. It doesn't have to be 100. It can be 999, as long as the P value N number match. That's all we need. So G00 X27 is now going to wrap it up to one millimeter short on that major diameter we're about to cut. And there's a reason why I'm not coming into X28 here. And that's because I want to add a chamfer to the front of that. We don't want the hassle of the burrowing round parts. It's really awkward to file these. So it's much quicker just to put little chamfers on in the machine to knock off those sharp edges. So we're coming up to X27. So that gives us one millimeter to the major diameter. So the next line, we're switching over again to a feed rate G01 and we add in our cutter compensation G42. Now this is a tricky one because depending on your machine controls, this G42 might not work in this position. It might need to be somewhere else. So this is a, definitely a case of referring to your manual of your machine and seeing a program that's provided by the machine operators to see where you would pop that in. Um, our Z0 there, so we're moving in uh, feed rate to Z0. So it's just gonna be touching the front face of that job that we've just faced off. And I'm giving it a feed rate, of course. So now we have our tool in position, we can now cut that first chamfer. Now, this is where turning can get a little bit confusing because we have to remember when we're setting our X value, we're working in diameters. So it's actually double um, from the center line. So because of that, to turn a 45 degree chamfer, we have to move twice as much in X than we do in Z because that X is actually each side of the center line. Um, so if we're moving one millimeter in X, we're actually only moving at all half a millimeter, but it's producing a one millimeter diameter. Because of that, to cut this 45 degree chamfer here, we need to move to X 28, which is the final size of that small spigot. And we also only need to move half a millimeter in Z to give us that 45 degrees. So now we have our chamfer cut, we need to turn along this shaft here. So we're gonna do that by Z minus 10. Now, if you wish to add a corner rad here, we can add an R value with the size of that corner rad. As long as it's larger than the diameter of the nose of the tool, we're good to go. So we can add a radius there if we need to. So once we're in that corner, and we wanna come up now to the larger diameter, so I'm using X39. Now again, X39 and not X40, and that's because I also want to add a half a millimeter chamfer on the top of that corner there, just to do bare. So we've moved our tool into position, uh, one millimeter smaller than the 40 millimeter diameter there. So the next line, we're going to produce that chamfer. So X40 Z minus 10.5, will cut a half a millimeter 45 degree chamfer on that edge there. Okay, so once we've cut our second chamfer, we're now going to go Z minus 25 millimeters. So that takes our tool five millimeters past the end of the part to give us some room to get our part and off tool in there to remove the part from the stock material once we've finished. So we've gone five millimeters past the end of the part there. Now you can change this depending on the width of your part and off tool. And we can also use the part and off tool 
to produce a chamfer on that back edge if needed. So we might do that later on when we part this part off. Okay, so with our tool in position, we're now finished our rough tan sequence. We wanna move that tool out of the way. So we're gonna go X44. So that's two millimeters above the stock bar diameter size. And again, you might wanna give a bit more clearance. Normally, I tend to give five millimeters to be fair. So with that done, our next line is our N200. Now going back to the G71 line, our Q200, that calls upon this N200. This is the last line of our subroutine. So N200 designates that. So G40 turns off our cutter compensation that we turned on with G42. X is our value here. That's still the same as before. We could probably omit this. It wouldn't make any difference, but I'm putting it there again, just to state that our X needs to be two millimeters above that stock bar size. And then our Z move moves the tool back to five millimeters clearance from the front face of the part. And I've given it a feed rate here of 200. So the reason I've given it a huge feed rate here is we're still on GO1, we've still got control, but it's moving almost at rapid speed, but we can control that with the override switch because it's not in rapid. So that's why I've given it a fast feed rate there, but we're still in GO1. Okay, so the next line, G53, that takes away our G54 works offset. It changes our works offset to the machine working offset, which is generally where the tool change would be, not always, but generally. So we're going back to our tool change position by changing our datum to G53, the machine datum position, and X and Z0 will take us back to the machine zero position. And I'm gonna turn the coolant off at this point with MO9. Talking of turning things off, we now need to turn the spindle off with MO5. G97 puts us back into the standard RPM mode for our spindle, which we switched out of when we switched into G96 for our constant surface cutting speed. I just got to point out here that I've also put that in the safety line. So if we stop this halfway through the subroutine or halfway through the sequence here, and G96 is still active, when we start this again, it will automatically switch to G97 on that safety line. And I do that on every single one of my sections of program, just so we can jump in the program at any stage and not have any issues. Okay, so with that done, we now just need to add an optional stop so we can check it if we wish after this stage. So I'll do that with an M01. So before we end this video, I just wanna point out that I've not checked this code in a machine. I've written this, sat at my computer. Um, it's not been checked, so do not punch this into your machine and expect it to run. In fact, do not ever punch a G-code program into your machine and expect it to run. So each machine set up differently, and this is a generic version of G-code that I teach to teach you how to program. Because we have to remember engineering is normally black or white. Things are right or wrong, but with programming, there is unlimited ways to write a program to produce a part. Some are better than others, but there is not a single correct way to write a G-code program. Okay, so if you enjoyed this lesson and you want to learn more about G-code, pop over to my website at gcodetutor.com where I have lots of free and paid courses over there for you to take and to learn more about this fascinating subject.